And when they go extinct, your carrying capacity to support NPK, any botanists, any plant geeks out there, any folks are going to go buy your little bag of fertilizer, right? Always organic and well balanced, and, you know, bag guano or compost or manures or something. That's what you're seeing there. These fish are amazing. And so, it's where I come from, this whole reality, <laughs> right? <clears throat> I'm admittedly a fish head. I, I'm, 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 I'm a fishophile. I like these things for a bunch of reasons. But from an overarching conservation biology perspective, they're really important for a bunch of reasons. How are the steelhead runs doing around here? Oh, six. six individuals. Yeah. <laughs> Any sense of what the pre-development uh, uh, population might have been? A lot more than six. Right? Look, check out a website called Shifting Baselines. Really nicely done job on this concept of baseline. If somebody's going to, so if the population next year doubles to 12, does we get a headline in the paper? The population's doubled? Is that, tr people like to play with numbers. Is like, no, no, tell me what the baseline was in 1750 or 1850 or give me a, a time, right? And what you'll find, I think, is that this, there's a wonderful author, Freeman House from the Matoll, and he wrote a book called Totem Salmon. And this idea that we learned from salmon, how humble of us hominids, that the importance of the watershed is a unit of perception. It's like, wow, okay, it's not just your lifeboat, it's actually a perceptual unit. And the perceptual unit that's got to get it is this one, right? And so the work of the day then is right here, ego system restoration. <laughs> and you've got to restore the headwaters, which is the water in your own head, to get the fact that it's up to us bipedal sacs of saline solution to grok this reality, right? If we don't restore the ecosystem, we ain't getting to the ecosystem. Don't fool yourself. This is about interpersonal, intersocial, intercultural dynamics of coming together to work it out on behalf of the longevity of ourselves. And Watershed, I think, provides a container to begin that discussion that's actually meaningful at a landscape scale. So where I come from, this is a coho salmon. Our mantra, right, is no coho left behind. Now that's all very quaint. Guess how many coho we had in the Russian River Basin, which is a 1,500 mile basin, this winter? Zero. This is the year they went extinct in the Russian River because we la last year they weren't there and the year before, and they're a three year fish. So it very much looks like we're going to go with we being fish and game and National Marine Fishery Service and UC Co op. I work a lot with those folks, so the, the Royal We. We'll be looking for them in a couple streams, but. They just, um, I think the euphemism, they blinked out this year. Interesting. And so you guys got six, right? This is actually a little, a little. Um, I was just looking around on the web. I put in Santa Barbara Steelhead. I was seeing if I could find some fun stuff. And I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe you like fish or not. I, I hopefully I'll have a, given you a sense that they have some value. But this idea of thinking like a watershed is interesting. And from out in the pelagic, Heal the ocean, right? Way out there. The thing about a salmon is they go way out there and they come way back, you know, up here. And they're really the linker. They're the perfect linker to connect us across. But as a biologist, I, I'm, I'm up for no sharp-tailed snake left behind. No slender salamander left behind, no matter how patriotic it is, right? No giant salamander, the largest terrestrial salamander in the world, right? Dicamptodon. These are all critters that occur on our land at OAC. Look at that beautiful ring neck. I, I'm game for keeping everybody around, right? I love scorpions. I've been stung by them. It hurts, but I like them. I like tarantulas. They're super cool. We need to keep the whole cast of characters on board with us. You need everybody. It's not this Noah's Ark thing where don't just take two. We need more than two. You got your lifeboat. You're wanting more than two of everything. And you know, it's, here's a fun one, right? There's, in science, there's this, this notion of kingdoms. When you get into classification, kingdoms, five kingdoms of life, there's some argument on protoctus and bacteria and all the prokaryotes, right? But generally, there's some plants, some animals, some fungus, right? We know those big ones. And I like to call them kingdoms instead of kingdoms because it's about kin, and I would hope that all of you are kinesthetic learners to some degree, right? 
You learn by doing sort of muscle memory kinesthetics. But really, kinesthetics, as far as I can tell, is honoring the aesthetics of your kin with all life. It's kinesthetics. And to be clear, genetically, these critters breathe oxygen and exhale CO2. They're, we're genetically more related to fungus than any of the other ones. So you really are a bunch of fun guys and fun gals, right? I mean. <laughs> so I think, and I do these trainings, these four-day trainings, basins of relations trainings and things, but I'm trying to figure out, in the process of restoring the home basin, the living lifeboat, it's the relationships of the community is where, where the juicy stuff's actually going to go down. Yeah, we can put some rocks in the creek, shape them in a pattern like a V, flows from here to here, you know, make it have this U-shape, create a venturi to dig out this, create a pool for fish. But it's ultimately, it's the connection of the people trying to figure out as workers. This is green collar jobs. Take on, you know, right here Hillary spouting that, Obama's on that, right? It's, it, it's really this whole idea of green collar jobs. We're going to need a lot of green collar jobs and, and true blue collar jobs with respect to water to step up to the plate. And it's, I think, the green part is that we bring in biology as a full participant in our solutions. So here's a bank that could have just been stacked with rocks and rip-wrapped or concrete, but instead it was laced with willows, and then the year later those willows all just sprout up. Biotechnical engineering stuff, right? You can just put plants in there. They're going to sequester sediment, grow roots into it, slow the flow, intercept surface flow, capture overland pollutants, create habitat, eventually grow out, improve shade conditions, reduce water temperature, provide carbon and organic matter, drop insects in the water. You get multiple, multiple functions out of it. It's a greener, more beautiful result. It costs way less money up front. You don't have to mine the rock and truck it from somewhere else, and it's longer lasting. Right? You get, if we start using biology to our benefit instead of... See, the move I'm up for is the game is I'm, I'm all about probiotic, not antibiotics. We're a our society, we're all about antibiotics. We're like, give me another antibiotic. And yeah, we need some pharmaceuticals. There's some, really ha there's some things that have been very helpful. But our behavior at a macro level needs to be probiotic. And so how do we work on that? You know, there's a lot of education, things like tonight, and many of us do lots of programs and outreach. And, some of us are super gluttons for punishment and sit around tables with in multi-stakeholder processes, right? <clears throat> not, I mean, we have some vegetarians, so there's some multi-tofu holders. Not everybody's holding steak in this system, right? <laughs> but it's a whole array of characters, and everybody who has a, a share in that basin of relation has a right to sit at the table and have a discussion about it. And it's an interesting organizing arena. It's a, an interesting sector of bringing people together. Wow. Ooh, that is really ugly. You might as well turn, I'll have to, ooh, that's our worst case scenario. <laughs> well, you're gonna, it'll, you might as well, or at least block this off so you don't have to watch me work on this. Ooh. Well, I can keep jabbering on, but, um, because it'll take a, it's going to take too long to load that back up. So I'll fuss with it. Um, so where I was headed with all that is basically what we've got then is a chance to begin to put the watershed back together. And that's going to be an interesting piece. And I think it starts with a, a level of hydro literacy, if you will. How do we become hydro literate? And I would support you in recognizing our current population of people, our, um, our society is the most ecologically illiterate civilization this planet has ever known. And has anybody read this book recently um, by Richard Louvre on the last child in the woods, this whole concept of nature deficit disorder? Their campaign is no child left indoors, 